Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real 1964 Part 2. And in 1964 Part 2, we hope to be sending several missions to Mars. We also have a Uranus window opening up and we are certainly going to be capitalising on that. And finally, after two and a half years in flight, Hermes 8 is going to be arriving at Jupiter. So at the start of this episode, we've actually got a little bit of waiting around to do. The first launch we are going to do in 64 part two is going to be for that Mars transfer window, which if you can look up in Kerbal alarm clock there up in the top left, that's not going to be for another, well, 52 days now. It was 82 when I started that sentence. But because of the magic of time warp, that 30 days went by in the blink of an eye. Now, you can see we have actually finished Serenity 1. However, I am not going to be launching that quite yet. Well, I can't because I don't actually have any astronauts trained to fly in Apollo at the moment. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. So we've got Ellen Cox, Valentina Zimmerman and Albert Harper, who we will be training. But I don't want to launch that mission until December. Reason being, I want to dedicate an entire episode to that launch. And I thought, let's wait till December and we can just finish this episode in December 1964 rather than January 1965. So what we're going to do is we are going to split 1964 into three separate parts. But for now, we are going to go into the vehicle assembly building where we are going to be working on New Dawn 2. New Dawn 2 is basically a copy of the SM64 probe. All we have done is we have taken off those landing legs and attached a much bigger antenna on the top. This is going to be our mission to Uranus. Now, we have New Dawn 1 already on its way to Jupiter, and New Dawn was actually going to be the series, well, the naming series of the next series of interplanetary probes after Hermes. How many times did I just say series then? I do not want to go back and count. Yeah, I kind of forgot about the naming convention, and only when I built this rocket, I kind of remembered about it. So they will be our new interplanetary probes. Here we are in Mission Control, where we are going to be picking up a few contracts in preparation for going back to Mars. You can see we've picked up the Mars orbit, we have picked up a Mars landing, and finally we are going to pick up a Mars rover contract. Because that's right, we have built up MRT. I have not shown the build of that because it is a super secret rover project that, well, now you know it's a rover at least because... Obviously, I picked up that contract. It would be rather silly if I picked up a rover contract and didn't actually have a rover to send. I wouldn't do that, would I? No, <laughs> MRT is definitely a rover. Here we have, on the 14th of October, 1964, the launch of MRT on an Icarus X launch vehicle. We've seen this launch hundreds of times. Well, probably not quite hundreds of times, but enough times that we can skip through most of the launch and see that lovely sunrise as we come flying over the Atlantic Ocean. So, one weird thing. That shouldn't have happened. I don't know why that started, well, I do know why that started spinning wildly out of control. Basically, when I built this craft, I had to offset that payload adapter so it wouldn't clip into those RL-10 engines on the Pegasus stage. However, for some reason, when I launched this vehicle, when I launched this spacecraft, the offset reset so the RL10s were then once again stuck in the payload adapter. So once I decoupled that they were obviously clipping and that sent it into a really strong uncontrollable spin. However I was able to get that back into the right attitude. I had to activate all of the RCS on that craft to do it in a reasonable amount of time though but it was fine, we managed to get it back under control. We have just finished our trans-Mars injection, although we did have to use a little bit of that AJ-10 advanced engine to capture, well, to finish our trans-Mars injection. That was meant to be the stage that was just going to do the capture, but we didn't quite have enough in those RL-10s. Not to worry, that capture stage is well overbuilt, so it definitely is gonna have enough once we actually get there, but yep, you can see here we had to perform a little bit of a maneuver still in Earth's sphere of influence to get a bit of a better encounter with Mars. We are able to do that and then 
obviously we are going to go in and we're going to set a maneuver node whack it in Kerbal Alarm Clock to let us know that in 321 days we need to pay attention back to this thing not even a day well no it is a day later the 15th of october 1964 we are launching super mario 64 on an icarus one launch vehicle this being the vehicle that i designed in the last build episode that i did so the mission for this is hopefully to go to both phobos and deimos and land on both of them now i don't really know if we have enough delta v in this to do both of them I have a feeling we should be able to because as I said in the build episode once you actually get to an orbit around Phobos or Deimos it takes absolutely nothing to land on one of those well basically asteroids captured asteroids so I think yeah I think at most it's like 15 to 20 meters per second but I don't even think it's that much so I think we should have enough Delta V, but we're, <laughs> we'll have to find out when we get there because I've not really calculated this mission properly. But here we have the Trans Mars injection with the SM-64 and we are once again not able to get an encounter with Mars as soon as we'd like. So we are going to have to perform another burn while still in Earth's sphere of influence to get our well approach to Mars a little bit closer. Another thing that I wanted to do with this mission is I wanted to try and match the inclination of Phobos and Deimos as closely as I could before I even reached Mars. It didn't go particularly well. I could have done better, but we'll have to deal with that when we actually reach Mars once again in about 320 days. Those two missions were a success, I guess you could say. Well, MRT almost wasn't a success because of those those weird issues with things clipping when they shouldn't have been. I, I really don't know why that happened. Here we have on the 22nd of October 1964, Hermes 8 has finally made its way to Jupiter. And we got an amazing shot of Io as well as we passed by it. That was... Uh, well, yeah, I came back to control this craft and I just had a quick flick around and had a look around. And then suddenly, suddenly Io appeared. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. So what I'm doing here is I have made my capture at Jupiter now and now I have figured out that I can get a flyby of Io in about 100 days. So I need to do a little bit of a maneuver all the way out here but it should be enough that we actually get a flyby of Io and it didn't take a huge amount of Delta V. I say not a huge amount, only about 300 or so. So we've still got 428 meters per second of Delta V left in this probe. We very well may get a flyby of another one of those Galilean moons with this thing, which would be really nice. Obviously we have New Dawn on its way as well, but that, well, that will be orbiting Ganymede, so it can't go and visit many more things than Ganymede. So that was a successful capture at Jupiter. What I've done there is I've picked up that Jupiter orbit contract and I am going to go in the cheat menu and complete that. I would complete it if I switched back to the spacecraft. However, that's just unnecessary time when I could go into the cheat menu and complete it. Anyway, it's basically I've, I've already done the contract. I would have fulfilled that contract's parameters if I would have jumped back into Hermes 8. I, well, that just takes a really long time. Playing with all of these mods, screen, well, scene changes does take a long time in Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System. So yeah, I decided to go the easy way out and actually cheat that complete. But here we are with New Dawn 2 on the 25th of November, 1964. And this will be, well, it won't be the last launch of 1964. It will be the last launch of this episode though our mission to Uranus. And once again, we were completely successful with launching this thing into low Earth orbit. Now, something that we weren't successful with, I did want to use that J2 upper stage to actually help us on our way to Uranus. It didn't work because I ran out of battery power. So we had enough battery power to decouple that, well, transfer stage but we did not have enough battery power to activate those J2 engines. So we are going to have to do our trans Uranus injection, I guess is the, the correct words for it. I probably, I don't know. We are going to have to do that with just those RL10s. And we did have to use a little bit of that 
Erezine and NTO Integral Tank, which has the RCS thruster on to finalize our transfer burn. But here you can see we do have an encounter with Uranus. But once again, it's not as close as I would like. So we are going to perform another maneuver within Earth's sphere of influence to get that a little bit closer which is what we are going to be doing here. Here, that engine, that Aerozine and NTO RCS thruster has fired up to hopefully bring our Periaps of Uranus down to a little bit more of a manageable level. And hopefully by doing that, once we actually get to Uranus, it makes it a fair bit easier to capture because obviously we do want to capture. It would be nice to make an orbit around Uranus. And we can see here that our periaps is actually a little bit too low. I had to bring up the atmospheric characteristics just so I could see where the atmosphere started because I didn't know. I've never been to Uranus before, so something new for me. But that was the last launch of this kind of almost mini-sode, I guess you could say, of Kerbal Gets Real. So next episode, next episode is going to be a big one. It's going to be well it's been my favorite episode to put forward so far and yeah you will have to catch that in the next episode because this is the end of this episode if you have enjoyed this episode why not give it a like if you have really enjoyed this episode and would like to continue with the content on my channel please do consider subscribing i have been karnasa and i will see you later